This is CBN News Watch. It is Tuesday, May 26th. I'm Ephraim Graham. Ahead today, more developments in the reopening of churches as California establishes new guidelines for religious services. This comes after President Trump's push to open houses of worship and the Justice Department sends a message to Nevada about religious gatherings. Mail-in voting or mail fraud, it's a big topic during the coronavirus outbreak. The last round in the political fight over whether voting by mail is safe or could lead to corruption. Israel establishing new ties with its neighboring countries amidst the COVID-19 pandemic and military chaplains, how they're working to help servicemen and women during these difficult times. The U.S. military for the U.S. military and the country. All those stories and more ahead in this edition of CBN Newswatch. I want to begin this half hour with the ongoing developments in the reopening of churches and houses of worship across the country after the coronavirus lockdowns. California released a framework Monday that will allow in-person worship services. Now, they include limiting worshipers to 100 or less or 25 percent of building capacity, whichever is lower, taking everyone's temperature, limiting singing and no sharing items like prayer books or collection plates. Reactions have been mixed. We think that these new guidelines are still arbitrary and unconstitutional. They're placing limits on houses of worship that they're not placing on, for example, factories or offices. And I would argue we care for our people probably to a greater extent than Lowe's and Home Depot and Target does. So we're going to have guidelines. We're going to have physical distancing. We're going to have entry and exit. The move came after President Trump on Friday pushed governors hard to reopen houses of worship, calling them essential. And the Justice Department is urging Nevada to reconsider its ban on religious gatherings of more than 10 people. Fox News reports the department says the directive may violate the First Amendment to the Constitution. Many Americans did something over the weekend they haven't done in a long time. They went outdoors enjoying beaches and parks for Memorial Day. Optimism is building in the fight against COVID-19 with more and more signs of hope, both on the medical front and on the economy. Del Hurt is on this story. A U.S. biotech company has begun coronavirus vaccine trials with volunteers in Australia with hopes of releasing a proven vaccine this year. And markets are reacting. What we're bringing to the table is a very strong immunogenic vaccine. It gives you functional responses. U.S. stock futures indicated big gains on Wall Street today on news of the vaccine and signs that global economies are coming back from the dead after the pandemic shutdown. Product shipments are growing again. Air travel and hotel bookings are up. Mortgage applications are rising and more people are applying to open new businesses. Oil is also rebounding after West Texas Intermediate plunged into negative territory for the first time on record, May is shaping up to be its best month ever, but still volatile. But the nation's food supply chain is still reeling from the effects of COVID-19. The CDC says nearly 5,000 meatpacking workers at 115 facilities in 19 states have been infected, forcing closures. The facility itself did not really have the proper method in place to really protect the frontline workers. And we started to see one plant after the other really got exposed. And with the supply chain disrupted, prices are rising. This month, fresh beef rose almost 12% and chicken was up 7.5%. But this past weekend, many Americans were determined to celebrate. Sick of quarantine and tempted by gorgeous weather in many parts of the country, crowds ignored social distancing and jammed parks and beaches for Memorial Day. If you're worried about it, stay home. If you don't want to catch it, then stay home. President Trump and Vice President Pence visited Arlington National Cemetery to lay a wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier. Joe Biden also made his first public appearance in two months at a veterans memorial in Delaware. And it was an extra special Memorial Day for this man. That's First Sergeant Matt DeWeese waving the Marine flag. The 99-year-old veteran is not only part of the greatest generation of World War II heroes, he's now a COVID-19 survivor. I've gone through hell more than once. And uh, this came almost as close. Dale Hurd, CBN News. 
Republican groups are suing California Governor Gavin Newsom and the state secretary over mail-in voting. They say the governor's executive order to send mail-in ballots to all of the registered voters in the state are a, quote, brazen power grab. It is the latest skirmish in the political fight over mail-in voting, which has become a major issue because of concerns of crowds of voters voting in person during the coronavirus outbreak. The president says mail-in ballots are very dangerous because of fraud and illegality, while some say it is just a way of making voting easier. Critics warn it could open the door to some dangerous practices. Gary Lane is on this story. There's an old saying in politics, never let a crisis go to waste. And so it is with the COVID-19 pandemic and the push to transform the way Americans vote. Eric Eggers is research director for the Government Accountability Institute and author of Fraud, How the Left Plans to Steal the Next Election. It's very interesting how the Democrats have attempted to use this global pandemic and unprecedented crisis in our country's history as an opportunity to reshape our election laws. California recently joined five other states mandating that their elections be conducted entirely by mail. Governor Gavin Newsom recently signed an executive order requiring ballots be sent to all registered Golden State voters prior to the general election. There's a lot of concern and anxiety uh, around uh, this November's election in terms of making sure that you can conduct yourself in a safe way and to make sure your health is protected. In Texas, the Austin City Council passed a resolution urging Governor Abbott and the Secretary of State to implement vote by mail to, quote, protect the voting rights and public health of all Texas voters. Texans who are concerned about their health, about um, standing in long lines, need to talk to their legislators. 32 states currently allow early or absentee mail-in balloting, in addition to in-person voting. President Trump says Americans should cast their ballots at a polling place. I think that mail-in voting is a terrible thing. I think if you vote, you should go. And even the concept of early voting is not the greatest because a lot of things happen. One of those things, potential voter fraud. Eggers says it's fair to assume that many illegal immigrants will receive mail-in ballots, especially in California. And he says ballot harvesting is a main concern. That's where states allow a third party to help the elderly or those shut in to fill out and mail in their ballots. You wouldn't just hand your wallet and say, hey, take this to the bank for me. But, uh, but Democrats are now asking people to trust their ballots to these political operatives. Election-related court battles are underway in at least 13 states, and election officials are still awaiting word on federal funds to expand the election process. That's money needed as deadlines approach for printing ballots and envelopes. And fewer states are now requiring voters to show a picture ID before voting. Virginia Governor Ralph Northam recently signed legislation repealing the Commonwealth's voter ID law. He said his action makes voting easier and strengthens democracy. Northam and others believe these laws disenfranchise individuals who don't have photo IDs. There's no evidence that requiring voter ID has infringed or diminished uh, the, the productivity of minority voters. In fact, many states, including Georgia, saw increases in minority voting after implementing voter ID. So for now, the big push is on to repeal voter ID laws and to vote entirely by mail. Up next, voting by smartphone. Definitely it would be convenient, but Eggers and others say that method could potentially create more fraud because it would be hard to determine who is actually using the phone to cast the ballot, the owner of the phone or someone else. Gary Lane, CBN News. Turning now overseas, although COVID-19 has wreaked havoc worldwide, positive things are emerging. For example, nations without diplomatic ties are working together to help others. CBN Middle East correspondent Julie Stahl is on this story. For the first time, a commercial flight from the United Arab Emirates flew directly to Israel, landing at Ben Gurion Airport. The unmarked Etihad Airlines flight brought 14 tons of humanitarian aid and medical supplies for Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza. The equipment included personal protective gear and 10 ventilators. Some remarkable outcomes in terms of advancing Gulf-Israel relations during this pandemic, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, of the six Gulf states, four of them are now in contact with Israel. 
New York Rabbi Mark Schneier has been building relations with Gulf state leaders for more than 12 years. He sees a growing partnership developing. My conversation with different Gulf leaders who have said to me, Rabbi, with our wealth and resources and Israel's brain trust and technology, in cooperation, we could be the region to find the vaccine, to find the cure. No Gulf state has formal ties with Israel, although Schneier says Qatar began the process two years ago. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu also made a rare visit to Oman in 2018, where he met with the Sultan. Around the same time, Miri Regev, Israel's sports and culture minister at the time, visited the UAE for a judo tournament, where they played Israel's national anthem, Hatikva. Schneier says common challenges are bringing Israel and certain Gulf states together. The Iranian threat continues, but now we have the economic threat. This virus has a very negative impact, not only on the Israeli economy, but on the Gulf economy. And then there's always the physical threat in terms of uh, keeping your citizens safe. Schneier says the Gulf states now realize they have a role to play in the Israeli-Palestinian peace process by offering economic incentives to the Palestinians. We're on that journey to the promised land of Israel-Gulf relations, and I'm confident that it will not take 40 years. And UAE landing its plane at Ben Gurion, bringing humanitarian aid to the Palestinian people is one more benchmark along that journey. Palestinians later rejected the aid, saying they didn't want to play a part in normalization between Israel and the Gulf states. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Jerusalem. Coming up, how has the COVID-19 outbreak affected one of the most important institutions in our society, higher education? We're going to take a look at the potential impact on colleges and universities when we come back. Stay with us. Thanks for joining us for CBN's On the Home Front, where we highlight what the men and women of America's military do to defend our country. CBN honors the men and women in our military with an initiative called Helping the Home Front. It partners with churches across the country to meet the needs of their military families, from repairing homes to wiping out medical bills for wounded veterans. On the Home Front, Tuesday morning at 1030. If you want to be an attorney with a passion for serving people and for excellence, Regent University needs to be high on your list. Regent's award-winning law school doesn't just create lawyers. We create leaders, judges, prosecutors and defense lawyers, civil litigators, and leaders in government. My focus has been trying to really make sure we have the future leaders we need for the, the bench and the bar and for society generally. You'll learn from highly credentialed leaders who are current and former judges, distinguished scholars, and ACLJ counsel. I'm so glad I chose Regent. Uh, the relationships here have been amazing. The faculty have been amazing. Not everybody's called to the same thing when they leave law school, but they're called by a God who has a purpose for their lives, and He is going to use that education to make a difference in the world. Regent will prepare you to be a purpose-driven, practice-ready lawyer. To start your rewarding law career, complete the online application, submit your transcripts, and take the law school admissions test by July. Apply today. Get the top political news and analysis from Washington on Faith Nation, tonight at 6 Eastern, only on the CBN News Channel. College educators have good reason to expect significantly fewer students this fall. It's a potential nightmare as these schools prepare for a new year filled with uncertainty. Heather Sells brings us this look at the future of higher education. 
Before the COVID lockdown, Christian college student Brianna Rios enjoyed her classes, student leadership, and time with friends. When the pandemic hit, life changed as her university went online and she struggled. It made it extremely hard to grasp the material, um, to stay motivated. But luckily, my professors were extremely understanding and they made the coursework extremely interactive. For many college students, this sudden pivot to online education became a disaster. An April survey by a key college marketing firm found that seven in 10 students said their online experience was worse than in-person classes. They hate it. <laughs> they absolutely hate it. Simpson Scarborough oh, chairman oh, Elizabeth Johnson oh, says students felt like they were teaching themselves and missed access to their professors. The big problem now, the number of students saying they're unlikely to return. Over half of these kids' parents have been either furloughed or laid off. Um, they say that their family's financial situation has changed dramatically. Um, and higher education is not inexpensive, and so that's the biggest factor. High school seniors are also uncertain, with a growing number changing their plans to attend a four-year residential college. Many are opting for community college or online programs next year. Factoring in fewer freshmen and returning students means colleges could see a 20% dip in enrollment. For administrators, it's tough planning for the fall. Will COVID be short-lived, continue into 2021, or work itself out in multiple waves? There's all kinds of scenario planning happening on college campuses. They're talking about things like having an option where only the freshmen come back to campus. William Jessup University President John Jackson is urging students to continue with their college plans. We are making every attempt to have fall uh, classes resume. We might have to have half class capacity. We might have to have alternating between Zoom and face-to-face, -face, but I think we're gonna have that experience and I would encourage students to search for a school that can give them that. Regent University has offered online classes for years and easily made the switch this spring. Still, its chief academic officer says technology is not the solution. We cannot rely on technology. What I've seen many schools do, again, K-12 and colleges, they, they somehow think, Technology is the answer. It's not. It's really faculty and teachers with a heart for the student. Shanika Farias, an upperclassman at Gordon College in Massachusetts, says she'll be back in the fall but doesn't want online classes. Just doing school at home is just not ideal. I have two younger sisters and a little brother who's two years old. So waking up in the morning and really trying to get ready for classes and really keeping up with school is just not the same. She's trusting and praying that she and her classmates can go back to campus. This is an opportunity for us to really take this, this, this situation. Okay, how can I turn this into something positive? That may be the silver lining for higher ed. Students seeing just how much they appreciate the college classroom experience, face-to-face -face time with friends and on-campus activities. Johnson is advising schools to help students remember what brought them to campus in the first place. And she's making the case that supporting universities should be a national priority, even during a pandemic. We believe higher education is an essential service. Um, you know, the, the, the people who are going to discover a cure um, and build all the tests, they were educated at our, at our American colleges and universities. I mean, this is an industry that must survive and must thrive um, to educate people who are going to contribute to our economy. Heather Sells, CBN News. Still ahead, the coronavirus outbreak has also hit another part of America, our military. We're going to hear how military chaplains are dealing with the impact of the virus on our servicemen and women right after this. Introducing the CBN Bible from CBN.com. Now, an easier way to study the Bible and grow in your faith. Highlight your favorite verse. Read separate versions at a glance. Click and read a commentary. Or cross-reference your favorite verse using the Strong's Concordance. All the right tools to study the Bible. All in one place. The CBN Bible. Available at CBN.com Bible or the iTunes App Store. This is CBN Newswatch. Thanks for joining us. Watch breaking news.
exclusive stories and programs. Credible news reporting. We show you what's happening in the world and how you can pray about it. This is CBN News Watch because truth matters. Weekdays at 5 on the CBN News Channel. Right on time. Super Bowl. Pepper's Pizza Palace is donating pizza for everyone today. Wait, 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 wait. I have big plans today. Trust in God even when times are tough. He has a plan for your life. Hey, we're going to be late for the grand opening. My parents want me to help with this outreach thing, feeding the community. What am I supposed to do here? Super Bowl. Join the Super Book Club and get Super Book The Birth of Moses, plus two copies to share with others, all for your gift of only $25. Pharaoh ordered all newborn Hebrew boys thrown right. into the Nile River, and I have a three-month-old brother. <gasps> the Birth of Moses, yours for a gift of only $25. What will you do the next time the soldiers come? I do not know, but I trust God has a plan for all of us. Superbook Club members free streaming for seasons one, two, and three is now available. We've seen how the coronavirus outbreak has taken a toll across all walks of life, and that certainly includes our servicemen and women. As stress and pressures become daunting, military chaplains do all they can to diminish the impact. CBN national security correspondent Eric Phillips spoke with the chief of the U.S. Army chaplains for this report. Major General Thomas Soljum tells me spiritual fitness is a major pillar of military readiness. And he says during this challenging time, the 2,800 chaplains in his department are working overtime. When you put on the uniform in service to your country, Eric, and you're asked to possibly lay down your life in rendering service to your country, we owe, we have a moral obligation to fulfill. Uh, to care for the soul of that soldier. And, and Major General Soljim tells me that obligation to the soldier is more important than ever right now. So you might have a death of a family member, for example, and you, you can't go to the funeral. Um, or you have parents that are aged and shut in and you can't get there. Now we have seen a reporting from our chaplains out in the field that there's been a real increase in a number of different areas for soldiers, uh, and their families reaching out to them for assistance, for spiritual uh, direction, guidance, um, and and not and and uh, and for religious uh, care as well for those things. The same types of sacrifice civilians face, coupled with the added responsibility of service. So, as with any worship, worship is centered around the light of Christ, and so we very much intentionally are lighting this light of Christ. To meet the need, chaplains have increased the hosting of live services. It's really a new phenomenon, and I'm really pleased to see how our people have stepped up to embrace the virtual environment in order to really continue to help people to stay connected. And today's thought is on the importance of small things. It means chaplains of all faiths across all military branches, not just ministering to troops and their families, but to all who tune in. So it's really taught us, I think, to raise the quality of of our of our speaking of what we offer people in a worship service or setting and they're getting creative like with the drive-in easter service at this installation in japan or this navy virtual service in pensacola florida they've been even doing things like zoom potlucks right so chapel groups or religious groups you know doing virtual potlucks just wanting to maintain fellowship because that's a very important connection. So I, I see it in, in all of the struggle that people are facing. It's a tremendous opportunity um, for people uh, to be touched in, a, in, a, in their lives spiritually that may, in many ways, uh, life as normal may not have produced. Soljum says another positive of this challenging time is those in his department learning of one another's faith in a deeper way. And he says no matter how many chaplains he has, there's always room for one more. Eric Phillips, CBN News. Coming up in this age of the coronavirus outbreak, high school graduations have been canceled or postponed. But coming up next, we're going to show you one creative way parents came up with giving their kids a graduation ceremony in Florida. 
Christians around the world are standing with the Israelis. But why? In CBN's free magazine, Friends of Israel, you'll discover why Christians are supporting the Jewish state, how Israel is fulfilling prophecy as a light to the nations, and ways you can pray for the people of Israel. Israel needs the support of friends like you. Call now or go to CBN.com to get your free copy of Friends of Israel. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the work of your spirit, Lord God, with this movement of getting the Bible, yes. Lord, into public school. Watch The Prayer Link, Tuesday nights at 6.30. Hey, if you're tired and exhausted all day, you can't think clearly, and you really just need a cup or even a pot of coffee to get through your day, then join me, Dr. Josh Axe, for this new series where I'm gonna teach you how to transform your diet and use essential oils and supplements to get a better night's sleep. Get Protect Your Sleep and live your best life with innovative information from five leading sleep experts. If you're not a great sleeper, you can do things to make yourself a great sleeper. If you're already a pretty good sleeper, you can enhance your sleep and be even better. Discover a sleep-enhancing bedtime routine. How to put insomnia to rest. Learn how to relieve pain that disturbs sleep. And much more in Protect Your Sleep. Everything you do, you do better with a good night's sleep. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 to get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. Don't miss out on this brand new series. Check out the CBN News Daily Rundown podcast each weekday with me, Caitlin Burke. Click on the show tab at cbnnews.com where you can listen and subscribe. And finally today, it's a high school graduation they will never forget. Seniors at Cocoa Beach High School in Florida were supposed to graduate this past weekend, but of course the ceremony was postponed, so parents got together and organized a celebration on the beach. The graduates, as you see there, walked down one by one, wearing their caps and gowns as their families and friends cheered them on. Their official graduation is now set for some time in June. Time now for your Tuesday Tweetable, and here's a message of encouragement. I pray you will post, tag, tweet, and share with those you know. Take the limits off. God's dreams for your life are greater than any dream you can imagine for yourself. His ways are always higher than your ways. His thoughts are always higher than your thoughts. Seek Him. He knows the plans He has for you. With that word, I encourage you to make today a terrific Tuesday. That is going to do it for this edition of CBN News Watch. I want to remind you, you can always find our news programs on the CBN News Channel. You can also find them online at CBNNews.com. We'd love to know what you think about the stories you've seen here today. You can email us at that address on your screen, newswatch at CBN.com. And, of course, you can always reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We'd love to hear from you. Hope you will join us again right here next time. Make it a terrific Tuesday. We'll see you right back here same time tomorrow. Goodbye. God bless. Thank you.